Mario Gautamus, and today we're going to be talking about undetectable. This is modern spy, and spying, I mean, undetectable weapons, and uh, see you in the next few clips. And we're back, and uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about undetectable knives and their history in the OSS now called the CIA. Um, this is what we're gonna move off first. We're gonna get a good glimpse of all the weapons. These are all these are all Um, on all the undetectable except for one, which is my real Tantoon, which that this uh, compares on the newest one I got. And you see, yeah, I made cases for some of them. And... We're going to slip back a little bit more and I'll show you one individuals. One individuals at a time. Undetectables uh, actually been around for a while. I mean, through history, uh, during World War II, it was called the Blackjack, which was made out of aluminum type alloy. Um, in recent times, the Blackjack got a really new finish on it, and it's nylon. Now, uh, what I mean by nylon is a certain type of plastic that will, if molded just right, it will be tough, strong, won't rust, won't break, won't do anything like that. Uh, so, that's how it's going to be in this video. Alright, so, come a little closer. Alright. Now the individual take on these knives are very robust. All right, let me look at this a little further out. Get a little bit more of a wider view. All right, more wider view. All right, the first thing we got. Is this little knife right here now as you can see it resembles a uh, throwing knife preferably and these this is a good stabber uh, thrust you know all of them do exactly the same thing um, the history of this is very simple. This was in the CIA for many times as a uh, ditch weapon, more likely, what it was. Um, and the CIA came up with a, a genius way to smuggle these things into certain areas. Uh, this was considered a letter opener at one time. Um, but it's called the letter opener defense in some cases but this is a double ledge stiletto it's made by CIA and you can see 
it's roughly a pretty good knife. Thrusting, stabbing. Uh, recently, it does have a groove notch right up in here. And that groove notch can do serious damage if it was raked across a lot harder. The edge could be used to cut, but eh, it's iffy on that one. The knife. This was considered a safe knife at one time, but now it's most likely a piercer and a cutter. You see these grooves right here? They're snaggers. So it can create damage on the skin if raked hard. Um, the blade is different. As you see, the blade's a little different. It is uh, beveled a little bit like a double edged knife. And that's for stabbing. You know, coming in real fast. Stabs. CIA Coupon Spike. Now, uh, you've seen this in one of my reviews. This is not a review. This is a um, thing on these type of weapons. Um, even though modern spy, this was considered a pretty good one. The first one designed was a, a ice pick. Um, the ice pick was uh, never thought of as a weapon at one time until the gangsters got a hold of it. And then the gangsters got a hold of the ice picks during the 1920s. In the 1920s, there was a lot of murders committed with ice picks. So this one represents the ice pick at one time. Now it's the Coupon Spike, which is triangular. See that? It's a triangular blade. This is for hard penetrations. Um, some shanking, uh, stabbing, and basically the same way as the knife. Uh, it's fast, eager. But the molding of this is pretty, pretty obvious that it can handle a pretty much uh, thing. The news purchase. Ladies and gentlemen, the news purchase of a weapon, which is the Tantum, this is my coverted Tantum. Now, this light, the real blade Tantum, say, just like the real blade Tantum. It is same length, pretty much good weight. Of course, modern spying, this would be a must out in the field. I mean, or survival, trap behind enemy lines. Mainly, this is what these were, knives were used for trap behind enemy lines. You need a weapon. You didn't bring a gun. The only thing you could use was some makeshift weapons and using your brains and learning your survival tactics and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, these were used behind lines. This one, good matter of fact, this is probably a special ops weapon. SOS means. Operation Special uh, uh, thing back during World War 
City. Now it's Special Ops, along with the whole thing to generate through the uh, CIA. Because what CIA is? Spies. And during history, Shinobis were spies. So, I'm doing both spying and combat. But, yeah, this is part of what it is. Um, all these weapons were for the high line, except for this one. This was used as a comparison. As used, it's the same way. I tested this out. This has a good thrust vector. Um, it will go through something. And it can probably cut. Let's see what I can find. They can't do jack shit. And I pay the difference. They can do what they said they can do. Pass uh, at this, knowing that these things can be very dangerous. Uh, certain states, these are against the law. Um, cops have it um, uh, looked on their site. They are kind of like uh, cavorted weapons are dangerous to the cops. But I don't use it for that. I use it where it's intended for, behind enemy lines, and survival. Um, all these. Now the knife and the blackjack, if you understand what the blackjack is, the blackjack is the World War II version of a coverted knife. Um, It's shaped exactly like this point, exactly like this point, and this end over here, it's, say this much, it became all the way around like this, and it still had the thumb grip there. So the thumb grip on this knife is right there, so that's what's thrusting. So, if you think about alternative weapons, alternative weapons, most likely you will have to understand this, this thing. So this is all what this is, modern spying thing, um, covert weapons, or undetectables. I already tested these things out. They go right through a metal detector. So that's all for today.